All right, hello everybody. This is uh, Veli Martin Kaito, uh, and today I would like to talk with you a little bit about language, and not just a specific language that is spoken, some language that you know, but we are speaking about something that I could say is the original language, because I believe that originally. There was only one language, and this was not like the languages that are spoken and written and taught in schools today in different countries. Now, if you think about language, what is language? We need to separate uh, clearly uh, what is spoken language, which I'm doing now, and what is written language, uh, because uh, although a written language uh, is uh, or can be spoken when, when you read the symbols that are, are on a paper or, or on a computer screen. Uh, but uh, if, if you look at the written language uh, alone, it is really just uh, markings, sim graphical visual symbols. Uh, that is, uh, it is, it is a tool to put down and memorize uh, something that is originally uh, spoken word, or at least used to be uh, before the age of uh, all this information that uh, comes in the computer age. And um, spoken word, spoken language, is about sound. Apparently it is about sound. Now when we learn current languages, we don't really uh, ever discuss what is the meaning of sound? We are just discussing what is the meaning of the words and sentences made of letters. And letters, uh, when they are put into your mouth, they are uh, phonetic sounds, consonants and vowels mostly. Uh, and uh, uh, no uh, actual attention is paid to the meaning of the actual sounds. Now it happens to be that we have, as human beings, a certain kind of a vocal system. We have certain organs, uh, mostly in our head, in our mouth, in our throat, to produce a variety of different kind of sounds that can be separated from each other. Uh, we can uh, most clearly recognize three uh, phonetic families. We are looking at the uh, beginning uh, only at consonants. Uh, uh, the earliest languages, the written languages, they only had symbols and writing for the consonants and the <coughs> vowels were just filled in. And we can uh, distinguish three clear families of consonants. Uh, families uh, divided into different groups based on uh, which part of the mouth they are produced. Uh, and the, with the lips we can produce uh, clearly two very different sounds. One is M, mm, which is when you have your lips closed. Mm. It, it's, it is a voiced consonant that can remain ringing for quite a long time mm, or a short time. Mm. Uh, if you look at the other sounds we can produce with lips, there's the second one, uh, it is uh, P, which is very different. It is still produced with the lips, but it is in the way that the uh, closed lips are very quickly opened with uh, at the same time letting out the air pressure, P. So, uh, the relationship between these two is that M mm is holding, holding the energy of this consonant, this sound. M mm P, P is releasing the energy and P putting the uh, air pressure out very rapidly uh, and, and it's, it's uh, non-voiced. It doesn't have a voice that comes from, from the uh, vocal cords in the throat like mm, the basic sound comes from the vocal cords. And then there is uh, something that is between these two, 
which is b, which is uh, semi-voiced. So you can hear b. in the beginning there is a little bit of voice, b, but then the voice stops and again the air is let out, but not with such uh, pressure as it is with p. So we have three. Uh, we have something that holds the energy and is somewhat, somewhat uh, directed inwards and then we have something that goes out and then we have something that is a balance between those two. Uh, you, you may know that the word balance begins with the letter B. And then uh, we have the same families, similar families of three phonetic sounds that can be produced first with the tip of the tongue against the back of the teeth, so we have, or, or on the top of the mouth, we have the soft uh, uh, sound of n, and it sounds very similar to m, n. But it is the other one is produced with the lips and the other one is produced with the tongue. Mm. And then we have t, which, which corresponds to P, T, M, P, N, T. And then again we have something in the middle, and that is D. Again there is a slight voice in the beginning, D, and then the uh, voice stops and a slight uh, air pressure is released. D. And the next uh, similar family is uh, in the back of the mouth, uh, kind of a glottal uh, area, where uh, the corresponding sound to m and n is so that you you close uh, your throat in the back of your mouth. The other two, they are very clear. There is uh, the k, which is uh, similar to p and t. K. And then there is the in between, uh, which is g, g. Again, there's a little voice, and then g, it's g, d, b. So we have these three balanced, and the three ma uh, masculine, I'm, I'm saying it, it is masculine because it is outward active uh, uh, energy. So here we have three times three consonants which could be seen as the basic building blocks of the sounds. So now I'm using uh, three uh, symbols to mark whether the sound is produced by the lips uh, the tongue or the back of the mouth and I'm using three symbols to mark whether it is the uh, voiced ringing sound or whether it's the un unvoiced voiceless uh, sound or whether it's the uh, balance between these two and this create a matrix of three and three and these uh, putting together these symbols we get nine different kinds of uh, uh, marks. What is important here to notice is that uh, now the marks for the letters M and N uh, are very similar. They are also very similar as sounds, but we need to distinguish them from one another. So let's add uh, another uh, uh, arc uh, to letter M, so we can clearly distinguish it from M. Now the thing is that these are not, in my view, and in the essence of the original language, they are not just phonetic values to these, uh, these, uh, this alphabet. But uh, there's also these energies associated with them, energies that relate to the archetypical worldview. It was a study that I started doing about 2009, 
Uh, I was looking at uh, uh, mythological uh, stories uh, as part of another uh, research I was doing for my book and I noticed that uh, the uh, names of gods and goddesses and like sacred things in the ancient cultures they somehow resembled each other uh, regardless of where uh, these cultures existed or whether they had any contact with each other uh, based on our current, current knowledge, uh, whether they had a contact or not. And then I got inspired uh, to look at language uh, through the art of sacred geometry, which is very much about um, archetypes you have a certain kind of structure uh, where different archetypes are located and how they are related to each other and even how they can be concluded from each other. And uh, some of the very well-known, maybe most commonly known archetypes are the four elements which we usually uh, call, at least here in the Western cultures, earth, water, air, or wind, and fire. And uh, obviously uh, the feminine energy, which is receptive, something that takes in and uh, uh, gives birth uh, uh, from something that it takes in, it's a re receptive, uh, energy, motherly uh, energy, and and the, uh, we can uh, easily uh, conclude that the m mm, m mm, mm are the feminine uh, kind of uh, sounds, whereas the p t k are clearly outward, uh, protruding, active, masculine sounds, and of course then there is the uh, neutral or uh, if we talk about man and woman, then the neutral is, is uh, like a child. And then, um, on the other uh, side, we have the three different parts of the mouth, and uh, through a very long and extensive study, uh, I have come to the conclusion that these can be assimilated with the three uh, elements of earth, water and air. So that the sounds produced with the lips are the element of water and the element of water is about movement. And it is also uh, generally considered that uh, the water element is about feelings and emotions. And then the sounds produced uh, with the tongue are the element of air, and the air element is about thinking and the mind, and, and it is about space and particularly location in space. And then, uh, of course, the remaining, the glottal area, uh, which produces the G, uh, G, G sound and K, uh, this is the element of Earth. And Earth is about uh, anything that concrete, physical, uh, something with a, with a shape, and uh, as uh, water is about emotions and air is about thoughts, then earth is about our body. It is simple because we are using 
uh, an arc both for the feminine energy and the uh, element of water which is the most feminine element and we are using uh, this triangle or arrowhead both for the balanced energy and the earth uh, archetype which is the most neutral of the uh, elements and then we are using uh, a diagonal line both for the masculine quality and the element of air the most masculine of all the elements and now uh, it is historically uh, known that the receptive feminine energy is best described by a cup that receives a liquid or holds stuff in it and the most obvious symbol for masculine energy is a stick or, or something that protrudes uh, uh, like a sword uh, and it is more active when it's diagonal instead of straight and then the most balanced shape is a triangle because when you have three corners you have no opposites uh, you have a, a balanced uh, space the element of fire is uh, at the moment still missing uh, don't worry it will come later but now if we look at these different uh, 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 alphabets and the meanings of them uh, as we put together the elements and the feminine masculine neutral energies we get certain kind of specific meanings for each of these nine uh, sounds and so we can take a look at them, them and we will start with one example we will look, look at the uh, letter M M is uh, in many cultures a sound that uh, expresses affection between people, particularly, for example, the affection between a child and a mother. And in, in many languages, the word mother begins with an M, uh, the most simple word being just ma or ama or am. And uh, this supports the idea that M as a sound carries this motherly feminine uh, energy associated with feelings. And the opposite of M is the masculine P. So we have, as opposed to Mar, we have Pa, Father, Pa, Pa, Pa. And this again supports that. Uh, that the father is the masculine figure that is more uh, active, more uh, kind of initiative uh, energy. So now let's also include uh, some of the element of fire. With the fire it kind of surrounds uh, these other elements, so you have fire on both sides. We have a uh, masculine fire which is expanding an expanding force a manifesting force and then we have uh, the feminine fire which is a suppressing condensing ener energy that puts stuff together then uh, the what the masculine energy uh, masculine fire and the feminine fire a sound uh, how, how what they bring to this is that they are still uh, associated with these three families of the lip family, the tongue and the glottal family uh, but they bring more or less a hissing element so in the masculine side we have a voiceless hissing uh, so when we take things forward from P and we continue the, uh, the sound of P with the hissing, it come, becomes a very strong uh, but tight release of the air pressure and it creates the sound of F. And then we have uh, the feminine which is a ringing hissing. So in the element of water it is the sound of V. 
in the element of earth, we have the <laughs> sound, uh, the masculine fire, and then we have the feminine fire, which is, which is uh, by closing the back of the mouth and then uh, making this kind of a hissing voiced sound. And with the element of air, in the masculine part we have the sound uh, so the hissing produced with the tongue and then the feminine fire which is uh, so again you're using the tongue but you are producing a voiced hiss. At least we have now here 15 letters and these are all consonants and it's a logical matrix of certain archetypical energies put uh, together. And what this means in practice is that when you have these specific energies associated with each sound we can produce, every word we utter, every song we sing carries these energies and this energy is more than the a dictionary meaning uh, given to these words. All right, now some of you who have uh, had an interest uh, to this uh, topic of ancient languages before, you may have already recognized the symbols that I'm using. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a comparison between these symbols I, I have kind of created here uh, in order to support this whole ideology here uh, and we are gonna look, uh, compare this uh, to the ancient Phoenician alphabet which is the oldest known phonetic alphabet system and all the other uh, alphabet that have come later are based on this uh, set of alphabet. the reason why there is several different variations for the uh, sound of V or W w, is that uh, originally they were not uh, variations for the same sound but they were actually marks for two different sounds V, V uh, and F and this is why we, we can find also a marking uh, for uh, V that looks very much like the uh, mark for F should be according to uh, the system that I have presented here. So otherwise uh, all the other uh, families uh, seem to work extremely well uh, with no real discrepancy there uh, whatsoever. History uh, tells us, or the study of history, that <coughs> the Phoenician alphabet is based on earlier markings uh, like hieroglyphs of Egypt and other uh, hieroglyphs of that uh, era uh, in the Mesopotamian area uh, close to the Mediterranean Sea. 
Um, the hieroglyphs were clearly uh, images. They, they were mostly not a phonetic writing, but they were images of certain com concepts and the image mostly would uh, look like the item that is describing. For example, uh, you would mark a, a hawk with a picture of a hawk and so on. And now um, some of the Phoenician uh, marks apparently do look a bit like the corresponding uh, hieroglyphs of another culture uh, in that time. However, I don't see that it can be just a coincidence that uh, a system like this, what I have constructed here, that we have the different energies or archetypes and, and then you uh, create this matrix uh, out of them and, and you have certain symbols for each energy and the combination of uh, two symbols always together produces uh, a, a letter, a, a written letter that looks very much like the Phoenician uh, letters look like. So here is the basic building blocks of the uh, original language philosophy and how it fits with the original alphabet uh, of the Phoenicians.